These are the top five decluttering mistakes that I have made and that I see so many other people making. Not only will they slow you down considerably, but they may also prevent you from getting the results that you want. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and this first mistake, it kind of depends on your situation, but I used to make this all the time back when I first started decluttering and sometimes I still make it, but that is taking on too much. This is the point in the process where I feel completely overwhelmed and regret everything. <laughs> Like, it would be really easy for me to say, okay, I'm going to just declutter my kitchen, clear out all the cupboards and the drawers, but that is going to be a massive undertaking, even if you don't think you have a lot of stuff. So instead, what I'm going to focus on today is just this cupboard where we keep some extra dishes and stuff, but also a lot of the dog's treats. So this is a relatively new situation for us because we only have the puppy a few months. So we didn't have a dedicated space for that sort of stuff. So all the food just ended up being shoved in here. I'm gonna sort this out. Now, it will obviously depend on how much time you have. Like if you have a whole afternoon, a whole weekend, maybe, you might be able to do a big decluttering job, but I think it's much better to go in small stages. Just clear out one cupboard, one drawer, because you can build on your success. You can still get a whole kitchen decluttered going cupboard by cupboard, going drawer by drawer. Whereas if you pull everything out, chances are you're going to run out of time, you're going to run out of energy, you're going to run out of motivation. You're just generally going to run out of steam and something may crop up that forces you to stop in the middle of the process. That is going to be really demoralizing. Whereas if you can get in some quick wins, it builds up some momentum that will keep you moving forward and keep you pushing to the finish line. But if something does crop up and you do have to stop, at least you will have completed one area. Okay, I'm gonna dive into this and I will explain the second mistake. Now, this might initially sound contradictory to the first piece of advice I gave about sticking to a small space, but that is to empty a space entirely. Now, obviously I don't mean the entire room unless you have the time to tackle that. I just mean whatever small space you are working on. So whether that be a cupboard, a drawer, a corner, even just a shelf, anything like that. Yes, it's a pain, it will take a little bit longer, but you are going to get much better results. My little helper is here again. <laughs> These are all her treats. Hmm, what do you want? You tell the people you got groomed. You got little St. Patrick's Day ribbons in your hair. Hmm, in your fur. <laughs> okay, you can have a treat while I do. Oh, careful. <laughs> Mistake number two, really. Trying to declutter with pets. It's really hard to get a sense of how much stuff you have until you pull it all out. And I'm sure you've experienced that where you think, how did all of that stuff fit in that small space? I definitely felt it with all of these dog treats. You will also be able to see how many duplicates you have. You will see things that you have completely forgotten about that were hidden at the back. It also allows you to give everything a good clean and when you handle everything, you can see the condition that it's in. If you just left it where it was, maybe you wouldn't notice that it was damp, it was moth-eaten, it was broken or something like that. Whereas when you take it out and you actually hold it in your hand, you can get a much closer look at it. Plus, you will be much more discerning when you start putting things back because once it's out it's just as easy to transfer it to a bin or a donation box than it is to actually go to the effort of putting it back whereas when you don't take it out then it's just easier to leave it sitting there if you want to do it in the fastest time by all means go through everything in situ but if you want the biggest results and that is always what I am after take everything out Okay, the third mistake, and I am not going to make it here, but that is allowing yourself to get stuck on things. I used to make this mistake all the time back in the beginning when I first started decluttering, and it was just slowing me down. You get to something, you're really not sure what to do with it. You're not sure if you want to keep it. You're not sure if it's time to let it go, and you agonize over it, and it essentially stalls your progress completely. You spend so much mental energy trying to make that decision that once it's made, you're just fed up, you're exhausted, you don't want to do anything else. Good girl, go to bed. Good girl. Feeding the dog treats to keep her occupied. <laughs> the crunching you can hear in the background. 
What I now do instead is I make really quick decisions. If I get to something that I'm not sure about, that I think will slow me down, if I can't make a decision on it, within the first few seconds, I set it aside. I have a maybe pile. I don't let it break my momentum. I just keep plowing forward. Quick decisions are the name of the game. Here she comes back for another treat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here you go, you're being a good girl. Here you go. Now. When you go to bed, good girl. <laughs> this dog is benefiting handsomely from these videos. <laughs> but yes, quick decisions so you do not run out of steam. You want to get through as much as you possibly can while you're in the zone. Now for the maybe stuff, come back to that at the end of the process or come back to it a completely different day when you have a little bit more mental energy, a little bit more mental clarity. Honestly, if you're really not sure about something, I would err on the side of caution and keep it for now. You may just not be ready to part with it and that's fine. Maybe you will be tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. But if you can't make a decision on it right now, keep it for now. Look at you, look. Girl. Having that maybe pile is what is going to keep you from making further mistakes and having regrets because it just gives you that little kind of buffer. It allows you to uh, leave things to sit while you mull them over. But what it's also going to do is make sure that you just get through the process as quickly as possible and finish what you started without getting bogged down. Decluttering can be physically and mentally and sometimes even emotionally exhausting. So don't use up all of that energy early on in the process. Make your quick decisions, get through as much as you can. That is what is going to help to essentially break the camel's back, I guess. You'll get the bulk of the job done and then you can return to your maybe pile after you have recharged your batteries or had a different kind of perspective shift or just stepped away for a little bit and then come back with a fresh pair of eyes. Okay, the next mistake then, and this is one I make all the time, still to this day, but that is not having a very clear exit strategy, knowing when you are going to be getting rid of this stuff, how you are going to be getting rid of the stuff, where you are going to be bringing it to. In my head, I always think, you know, when I go through everything and put the stuff that I'm keeping back, that's it. That's the end of the job, but no, there's a pile of stuff still sitting there waiting to be actually decluttered because really all you're doing in the first step is just choosing to declutter it. Whereas what needs to happen is to actually declutter it, get it out of your home. Because technically the job is not actually done until you complete that step. It's like if you cooked a meal, ate the meal, and then just left all of the dirty dishes out. Just by eating the meal, that does not mean that your job here is done. So I would say when you are planning a decluttering job, make sure that you allow enough time and energy at the end or at some point later in the day, later in the week, to actually deal with that stuff. Like I said, big mistake that I made, big mistake that I continue to make, thinking once I have made the decision to declutter stuff, that's it, that's the job done. But then I'm left with piles of stuff everywhere. Thankfully for this job, it's going to be pretty easy because a lot of this stuff can just be trashed or recycled. Yes? What's up? What's up? They're just cups. They're just cups, no treats in them. I also have a box that I keep in. Excuse me, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I also keep a box for donations in our coat closet so that way as soon as I decide that I want to declutter something I can pop it straight in the box and then at the end of every quarter I bring that box to the charity shop. Do yourself a favor have a box at the ready have a trash bag at the ready have a recycling box at the ready paper shredder whatever you need to get that stuff actually out of your home or get it gone one way or another. Next is doing too much or just going a bit overboard when it comes to systems. So for example, running out immediately and buying storage solutions or putting a really complicated system in place that you're just not going to stick to in the long term. So for this project, I just used some containers that I already had on hand, some from the pantry and others are basically just empty packaging. You know, matching containers and dispensers and things would have been great here 
here. I would have loved that. The perfectionist in me would have loved that. But realistically, that is not a system that me or my family would have kept up. So I just identified our biggest problems and I tried to find the simplest solution. So for us, the two big problems were space. You know, we had lots of large containers, boxes, bags, things like that. So I tried to condense down as much stuff as I could. And then the second problem was just we had all of these bags. They kept falling all over the place. So I put those into a container that was left over from when I decluttered my fridge. It just helps to keep all of those kind of fiddlier things, the things that tend to fall over a lot easier. It keeps them all corralled together. For all the important papers then, I just pop them into one envelope. And listen, it may not be Pinterest worthy, but it is perfect for us. And then apart from packages that I threw in the bin, here is what I am going to be getting rid of by trashing, recycling, donating, or like with the Santa hat, just putting it somewhere else in our home. Have you made any of these mistakes or have you made any other mistakes when it comes to decluttering? They are so common and it can really slow you down. That's why in my decluttering course, one of the first parts of each module is the obstacles that you will face and how to overcome them. I break down each space, each category, so kitchen, closet, office supplies and stationery, toiletries and cosmetics, etc. And I give you the obstacles that you're going to face in each and every one. And like I said, how you are going to overcome them. So if you have been trying to declutter and you just keep hitting roadblocks, my decluttering course is a reopening very soon. Hop on the wait list. I will leave the link in the description. Hundreds of students have gone through it and I just heard such amazing stories. The feedback has been incredible. If you are ready to transform your home from cluttered to calm, make sure you're on that wait list. And until next time, grab me the magwif. Agus fekki me shif shikalua. Sláan. <laughs>